Hello everyone. Happy Monday to you. I um, am just getting back today from the INA conference and we had a blast. Hi Tiffany, how are you? Um, it was so much fun. I tell you, I met people that I have been waiting to meet that have been on my list of people to meet. And when I tell you, it was a time. We had a, a blast uh, from the conference, from the, the workshops, to the receptions, to the open sessions and the business meetings and finding out that we're going to be in New Orleans next year uh, from March the 28th through the 31st. It is going to be a blast and I expect to see all of you there. So plan now. Tickets, uh, advanced tickets for members will go on sale soon. Um, they're having a glitch right now with the system. But as soon as they're up, guess what? I will be announcing it so you can get your tickets early before the early bird special. So now there's a different price for the members and the non-members. And the difference in that price is more than the cost of a membership. So it would behoove you to get the membership, become a member, so you can get the member's price and get all the benefits because when I tell you the uh, the shops and Starbucks and who else was uh, the restaurants that we went to we got discounts at all of those uh, everywhere we went to eat uh, on the resort and in the shops in the resort we got discounts and I was loving the discounts so please be sure that you sign up for next year now Tonight, we have um, one of the presenters from INA is our woman to follow this month. But before I bring her on, I want to tell you a short story. I was um, on an interview Wednesday night and I could not... Um, for the life of me, I don't know why, but I decided to be bold and go for what I wanted and to tell them what was important to me and to just, I don't know, I, I should have said I asserted myself in a nice professional way. And after this two hour interview, I still didn't know whether or not I had the job. But this morning when I got off the airplane, I had not one, but two jobs that I had interviewed for and told them what I wanted and told them how I wanted it and told them what was important to me. And that if I, if they couldn't support me and what I wanted to do with Ask the Nanny and how I wanted to attend conferences and trainings, then they probably weren't the families for me. And guess what? I got what I wanted. So, Tiffany is here tonight, and she's going to tell us about getting to your happy place, because I just got to mine. <laughs> so, I'm going to invite her on so she can tell us all about the happy place. Some of the things that she talked about in her, um, on the, in the workshop, I was like, I just did that. I just did that. Oh, I need to do that. So it's very important that you listen closely. If you have a pen and paper, you might want to write some of these tips down because what she's saying is true. I'm, tr I'm trying to tell you, it's just from my experience, I've never been this bold and I've never just gone out on a limb. I've always said, okay, okay, I'll accept that. I'll do this. I'll do that. And then when I, when it happens in the back of my mind, I'm like, why did I do that? This time, it's going to be totally different. So without further ado, 
Where is Miss Tiffany? Let me get her on so she can tell us a And while we're waiting on Tiffany to join us, hello to everyone who just Hi. came in. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? So good. And first of all, huge congratulations. Yay. You're awesome. <laughs> I was clapping for you. And yay. Good things happen when you ask for what you want, right? Yes, yes, and I don't know why I did that. It was it's the first time I just laid all of my cards on the table. I usually just take the job and then I'm like, okay, so uh if it's okay with you, can I is it a and and I'm like, please, 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 please let them say yes. <laughs> so <laughs> um, But I learned from you. I learned from the best. Oh, <laughs> Brought your you brought your boldness to the conference to share so I'm so happy that's awesome you have yes. to ask for what you want, right um, yes family aren't mind readers they don't know what you need and so asking for what you want is the only way you're gonna get it true true so. true so tell us about yourself outside of the nanny realm Okay. That's hard to do because I've been in the nanny world for my whole adult life, right? So um, it's really all I know. I mean, I got my first nanny job right out of high school. Um, I grew up in the Bay Area. I'll start there. I uh, grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and I had decided to pursue a degree in electrical engineering, but I loved kids. So I loved math and loved kids. I'm probably the only adult that loved the common core math thing. I know, right? Um, yeah. so, the old one, like, here I am. <laughs> um, and so I pursued my love of engineering and my love um, at school while being a nanny. So I worked full time, full time as a full time nanny and went to school full time. And by the time it came time for me to finish my degree, I, I knew that it wasn't where I wanted to be, that being a nanny really was my jam. And I did that for a long time. I mean, I have over 10 years of nanny experience. Um, and then I, you know, in between that, I moved to Washington State and went to the University of Washington. And then um, I nannied up here as well and fell in love with, a bit, with um, the Pacific Northwest and fell in love with nannying. And when it came time, like came to a natural end where I decided that um, it was time for me to move on from nannying. The woman who had placed me in my last position offered me a recruiting job. And so I went straight from nannying to recruiting, and um, I just stayed in this industry that I love. So asking me about what I do when I'm not nannying is really, or in this industry, is kind of non-existent. It's my life. <laughs> um, yeah. But I'm married. I have two amazing little kids that are one and two. And um, a crazy dog. <laughs> so usually my time not working is spent with them. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, now, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yes. It was amazing. And I, I think I'm going to go for my pen next year because I can get 15 years. And then, because I'm right at 18 uh -huh. Almost 19. So okay. if I go for my 15 next year, the following year, I can go for my 20. Right. I need to do that, too. I actually haven't gone for any of my pins yet. And I was like, why have I not done this? I need to do it, too. It's been it's a great love of mine, this industry. So, yes, we'll yes. do it together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Hey. Toya said she missed all the amazingness. Well, Toya, come to Louisiana. I know. New Orleans, baby. New Orleans. No. That's right. <laughs> come on no. home. <laughs> so now my next question for you is why did you start? Um, how do you do? How did you start um, Nanny's On Call? Um, uh, on Call? On Call on Nanny. Call. I don't know why I said <laughs> Nanny's On Call. Um, yeah. On Call Nanny. 
Yeah, well, it's kind of a funny story. And so I should probably back up a little bit. So I went to work for my first agency. Um, and when that agency sold, um, I, beca- I became the co-owner of another agency and ran my own agency with a partner for four years. And during that time, we only did placements. So we partnered with On Call Nanny, who opened around the same time that we did. So I am not the owner. I'm the operations manager of On Call. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I run the day to day, all that good stuff. Um, I just don't, I just don't own it, which personally is fantastic. Actually, <laughs> um, so like our you family, we're a big family. And then when it came time, um, I really wanted to move away from placements, and um, an opportunity opened up for me to come and join the on call team. And I had, ne- it's one aspect of the nanny industry that I had never, um, I'd never explored. So I had done placements both myself and as a recruiter for about eight years at that point. And so on call was a new challenge for me. And I came in, I had helped set up their placements department. And then, um, four years ago, I was given the opportunity to actually run the whole company. And so I've got a, um, a deep look and love for the on-call world. Um, so it's been, I, I didn't start it, but I've grown it and I love it. Um, so it's that, it, it kind of became a new challenge for me in the industry. And it's something that I really, really enjoy. So um, we're, I'm four years in with on-call nanny at its helm and it's, it's, fantastic so I kind of happened on it by and by providence and and here I am now they're my family and it was meant to be it was meant to be for sure yeah for sure now now that we got the preliminaries out of the way tell us tell us tell us tell us tell us now what is by def- by your definition, what is the happy place? Oh, the happy place is where you meld your joy with what you do in life, right? Like for me, I knew that even though I had a deep love for engineering and for math and for that career, I found the most joy in my life caring for kids. That was my passion. And so your happy place is being able to do what you love, to ask for what you need, and to still be of service. So if we're talking specifically about our industry, which I believe you have to have a heart for service to do, right? Yes. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. It doesn't matter how much, um, how many books you read and how you prepare for this job. If you don't love caring for kids and caring for families, you're never going to find success in this industry. So we'll keep it industry specific. Yes. Um, yes. So industry. Happy, yeah. So the happy place for me is finding that family that you love and also and pouring everything that you have into making that a great experience for them and being able to ask for what you need and what you want to make that experience equally happy and enjoyable for yourself. And it sounds so easy, right? I mean, I think we are, it sounds yeah. no brainer, but it's so tough to ask for what you need. Um, So I feel like the happy place is being able to ask for what you need and to do what you love. So in a very, I mean, that in the most simple terms. Okay, so what are the basic principles Mm -hmm. of finding your happy place? What are the the basics of, of, of getting to where, to that happy place? Yeah, well, I think first is intention, right? You have to know what you want. You know, so if, if your dream, for example, is to have that, the, that fantastic nanny position or household manager position or personal assistant position, like figuring out what the specifics of what you want is step one, right? So, and I don't think it is ever enough to just say, I want a great job because what is a great job to you might be your best friend's nightmare, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I yes. think- First is really identifying what it is that you want. So um, we talked a lot in the seminar about, you know, really leaning on your village to kind of, so we talked about a couple of things. We talked about solving problems within um, a, a, your current position. Um, but in terms of finding your happy place, the first thing is to know what you want. Um, so if that is a fantastic new nanny job, 
the next step for that is to really identify what that is, the specifics of what that looks like. Um, and it, the visualization process is huge, right? So it's not just, I want a great nanny job. It's figuring out what that means to you. Um, and everything from location and pay and ages of the kids to the parenting style of the family that you're going to go work with. That is huge because you know and I know that to make that <laughs> success nanny's family connection work, you have to be on the same page, yes. right? Um, and so I really think identifying what that dream is for you is step one. And then go get it. Um, and I think the biggest part of that is really learning how to advocate for yourself and knowing what you want is step one, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, when you said the big dream, as you were talking during the conference about the big dream, I was like, I have a dream. <laughs> I didn't mean to say, wait, wait, wait. That did not come out right. <laughs> no, it came out right. No. <laughs> <laughs> it came out right. I promise you, I was not quoting Martin Luther King. I was not. I promise that. <laughs> I, love I have a dream board. Mm -hmm. And on my dream board, in the very center, it says, Ask the Nanny. Mm -hmm. And out from Ask the Nanny, I have all these arrows. And then from those arrows, I have little mini arrows mm -hmm. as to, okay, so I want to do podcasts. I want to go travel and video with people at conferences. I want to make videos of the conferences and memories so that everybody, we can share with everybody that not at the conference. I want to have sponsors and affiliates so that I can put some money into Ask the Nanny because it's not easy <laughs> and it, it's very costly doing Ask the Nanny. I know it looks like it's not, but it is. And right. I wanted all these things and there are several other things on the on that board. But the first mm -hmm. thing was you have to, I said, well, how am I going to find a family that's going to be willing to let me work mm -hmm. and let me work? Mm -hmm. And I was, I just like, okay, so I'm just going to go for it. These last two, and believe it or not, they are NCS jobs. Right. And I was like, so I want to do this. I want to do that. And I know these two dates that I'm going to be traveling are in within this contract. Oh, we got plenty of family. I, I, I totally agree with you. What you need to do is you need to go yeah. to those conferences. That is personal development. And I'm like, yeah. Course, I'm sitting here like this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but inside I'm like, ah! so <laughs> I really live by the motto that build it and they will come. I really truly feel that if you follow your path, if you if you know what you want and you set your intention, it will come. And look at you, like look at you, you're doing it right. I you I'm trying. Your <laughs> you're totally doing it. Yeah, that's huge part know what you want and for me I've always been a, a kind of person where visualizing what I want was it came very natural to me and what I realized after all these years of being in the industry that that doesn't come naturally to a lot of people yeah. right just sitting figuring out what they want because caregivers have that mindset they're used to taking care of other people that's where they're that's where they find their easy that's the easiest thing in the world for them is to take right. care of others. And so laser focusing on yourself and what you want doesn't come naturally. So step one can be really challenging for a lot of people. So you did that. You got that under control. <laughs> I won't say under control, but I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to go. I want to try it. I'm going to go for it. All I can do is say no. So it yeah. takes a tough skin to ask for what That's you true. want and be fearful of the rejection and hoping and praying that, you know, okay, so are they gonna say yes or they, are they gonna say no? Is it gonna work or not? But I just mm -hmm. believe that if it wasn't them, it would have been somebody else. So, That's so I just went yeah. for it. To get into your happy place requires being uncomfortable because, you know, so the, the title of the talk was out of your comfort zone and yes. into your happy place. And yes. there, there are two locations when you first start out, right? So if they overlapped, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a challenge, right? It's the getting True. there. That's the hard part. And so it is, it does take a lot of faith. 
and you're never going to do it right the first time. It takes a lot of practice. And then, you know, we talked about too, that sometimes the answer is no, or sometimes mm -hmm. you're going to fail, but it's the part that you're trying and that you're moving in this direction that's going to force you to grow and end up landing you in your happy place. Like that's the goal, right? Yes. Um, because yes. For, so say, like, for example, you go and you interview for a job and you've passed your questions. You feel like you have all the information that you need to make the decision if that's the job for you. And then you start the job and, oh, whoops. I didn't ask that. This clearly isn't going to be a fit. You do your best to try to fix the relationship and then it's still not working and you end up leaving. I still feel like all of that information that you just took and all of that experience, even the negative stuff will help prepare you even better for the next time. Right? So that's how we grow. We try new things, they work or they don't. And then we kind of refine our process and we try again. So yeah. Well, can you tell us the story? about you jogging down the street skipping down the street yes oh girl yes <laughs> yes I so you know most of the nanny jobs that i had i worked um with long-term families i work I mostly worked with kids age zero to five um and um i was saying at the conference that most of my jobs are really well went really well and i have wonderful long-lasting relationships with the families that i worked with but my very first job when I moved to Seattle was less than perfect. I will just say that. And it was a job with a baby, which is what I always loved. Like I always took the baby jobs because I would like to grow with, grow with a position. Um, and I took a job with a family where, do you remember when I gave the specific example that um, for me, it was really important when I took a job that I would be able to drive with the kids and get out and about and explore the area. I just moved to the Pacific Northwest and I wanted to explore it. I was coming off a job where I had total freedom to plan activities. Well, in my interview process with the family, I had said um, to the family that it was really important that I get out and about. And the family said, okay, well, we need to build some trust and then you'll be able to, to go out eventually. And, and I trusted that eventually their definition of eventually fit my definition of eventually. And we were on different planets when it came to that. So six months into the job, I had asked like, hey, how do you feel about us going, um, you know, two miles down the road to the local Discovery Museum? And it was a hard no. So I realized that they had said that to get me in the door. I didn't ask follow-up questions. We had other issues as well. Mom was very jealous of the, the bond that I had with, ba with baby. It, it was just a really, she was aggressive to me and she said not nice things to me. And unfortunately, when I had taken that job, the, mar the job market had crashed. And so even though I, when my contract was up, I began exploring other job options, there weren't any available. And I ended up staying for three years. Three years, and um, I, I was I loved the baby, but I was never excited to go to work. I didn't know what I was walking into. It was a very verbally abusive relationship. And on my last day, um, so three years, I have a three year old in front of me. Mom says to me in hearing shot of the little girl, "Well, don't say goodbye to her um, because she's not really going to notice that you're gone." She said that to me. Mm -hmm. So anyway. The end of my day came, and I literally skipped down the road. Now, mind you, I was leaving that job to go travel around the world with my future husband. So I had, I had very exciting things ahead of me. But I also had the exciting beyond, I can't wait to have any other experience but this one. I know what went wrong here. I will never make the same mistake again. I was very professional, loving. I loved on that baby and that family anyway. And the most interesting thing about this story, I did skip down the road to my car. I will that. <laughs> but about three months later, I got an email from that mom completely apologizing to me about everything because it, after I had left, she went through four nannies in three months. Wow. So, yeah. And then that experience was really the basis of me understanding that what you don't want in life is almost as important as what you do. Right? So I yes. took that nugget and I went, now I have to change. That was the moment I realized 
that I have to interview families too. That it's not just about families interviewing you. That once their questions are asked and they get to know you and they get a feel for you, then it's your turn to dig in and make sure that you are asking the questions that you need to ask to make sure that you know that is the job for you. So in that circumstance, I would have turned around and asked the family when they said, eventually, we'll let you drive. And I would have asked, what does that mean to you? And I guarantee, having had this three-year relationship with my mom boss later, I know she would have answered me. So um, learning to ask questions is powerful. It's a powerful tool for getting you to your happy place. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I have a question about questions. Do you have a list of questions for interviewing uh, that you ask? uh, You know, because I know some things are just triggers that you should that you should like, okay, so what is like you said, what does that mean? And it should trigger a response of, okay, can you expand upon that? Can you tell me about this? Can you give me a situation or can you, because I know I had a situation that I should have asked questions Mm -hmm. and trust me, money (laughs) is not everything. Mm -mm. First of all, money is not everything. Money Mm -hmm. is not going to get you to your happy place. Never. Mm-mm. It won't get it's you to your happy cool. place because p- they're in luxury. But yes, yes, right. money's not going to get you to your happy place, and yeah. it is this job. I was like, oh, I can do this. It's only three months. I can do this. I got this. It was one of the worst jobs I ever had, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh my god, what did I get myself <laughs> into? You because never- I didn't ask follow up questions, right? And yeah. when you don't ask follow-up questions, those vague lines, those blurred lines become, okay, so no. And right. no. Uh, right. I told yeah. you in the interview, no. And I'm like, did we have, did we have the same discussion? <laughs> was, right. was I there? <laughs> you planned. So, right. so yeah. do you have questions just general questions that we should ask after the interview, after they've asked all their questions. Do you have like trigger points or trigger questions that we should like, okay, let me ask this question to expand upon that. Or let me ask this question that will bring out more from them than what they are actually sharing with us. Yeah. And so it's hard. I do have a list of general questions and okay reach out to me and I will send a list. So when we have a nanny that's interviewing, I always send out a gen like, Hey, make sure you're asking questions too. Like I, I make it a priority for my team. So there are general questions, but I also want to go back to point one, which is setting your intentions. So when you set your intentions of what you want, it will Mm -hmm. naturally allow you to come up with your list of questions. And I'll give you an example. Like for me, it it was really important to me that I worked for a family that saw their nanny as a team member and a a part of the parenting team. Mm -hmm. It was important to me that I worked for a family that had very similar discipline styles to me. It was important to me that I had um, a family that had the same values around sleep training, right? It, It was, and it was important to me that I had a family where I could get out and about with the kids. So I based all of my questions based on these four principles, right? And so ask the question. So the first step is to compile what's important to you in the job because it will allow you to laser focus your questions. Right. So for example, so all of these things are important to me, right? So if I go to an interview and it's time for me to ask my question about, um, let's say, sleep training. And so for me, just so you know... (laughs) Um, I think it's important for a kid to have a schedule. I think babies grow and thrive when mm-hmm. they have 
sleep and food and rest and comfort, right? So sleep training for me um, is huge. I have, um, both of my babies came to me through the foster care system. My son was born drug exposed. They told me he would never sleep. And he, at eight weeks in, he was sleeping through the night. So, um, right? So like, that's, it's, that's, that's what I'm telling you this because I want you to know how important it is to me. So when I go and I meet with a family who has a baby, I will ask, um, you know, what are your thoughts on your baby's sleep patterns and routine, right? That's how I would, and so it would allow them to kind of tell me what their thoughts are, what they've heard from their pediatrician or all of their family members right now. Yes. <laughs> to this, right? And um, so it allowed me to start the conversation. And if they were to say, well, we don't really know the baby's kind of sleeping with us we don't really have it it's not important to us for the fan for him to sleep through the night right now and you know maybe we'll get into a routine but we really like our active lifestyle and we want him to just be able to go with the flow okay for me after 10 years of experience right now that's a red flag mm -hmm. not not that they're i mean good for them this has nothing to do with judgment this has to do with connection and fit Right. For me, I said, okay, I would ask, can you elaborate on that? You know, babies, when they're newborns, they really need to be on hand, right? They need to feel you. They need to, when they cry, you need to respond. I'm not, you know, um, you know, but how do you feel like after three months, like, do you want them to see, to, to be able to be sleeping in their bed at night? Are you planning on co-sleeping? Um, what about during the day? Would you like them to have some sort of steady routine? And if the family at that point is still saying, actually, no, we really don't. I know they've answered the question mm -hmm. that that will allow me to make my decision. So it's, it's harder to focus more on a general list because every nanny is going to want specific things right. for her job. So my sincere advice about the list of questions is before you go into your interview, that you sit down and figure out, what is important to you and what are the questions that are going to get you to know that um, this is the job for you or not, right? So I do have a list. That's a long way of answering your questions. I do have okay. a list of general questions, but I really want you to focus on, um, you know, making sure that you leave that interview totally sure of a yes or a no. Okay. Now, my next question is how important is um, oh my communicating. <laughs> How important is communicating to that parent mm -hmm. what you want your your uh, your wants? How important is it to communicate it in a non-combative way? I'll put it like that. It is everything, Angela. It is everything because in a certain in industry where we lead with our heart, right? That's what all families are looking for. Our heart more than even more than our experience. Mm -hmm. um, you are the professional. It is unbelievably important that anytime that you're asking for what you want or what you need, that you're doing it in a professional and compassionate way. Tone is everything. And I'll give you an example. If I'm asking a new mom, I am talking to a new mom who is scared and tired and recovering and doesn't, has never had a nanny before. My first job is to put her at ease, right. to validate all of her feelings. Like, how are you doing? What is it that you need? Right. We're not getting into our questions to the family until after that we have put those, that family at ease until we have answered their questions until we have held that baby and you know the family can see you with that baby right. and then when it's time for your questions it's not well when are you going to let me drive are you going to let me drive with this kid right that is immediately going to put anybody on the defensive yes right it is really important when you're communicating a question that you're doing it in a really loving way right because you don't you're doing this for yourself and them, right? Sometimes when you're asking a family a question, the, the likelihood that they've never even thought about why that would be a big deal is huge, right? Why would it be important for you to drive with my baby? We're talking about taking care of my baby, right? For right. me, I'm talking about longevity. I'm talking about how we can grow together in this position. And I'm coming to you as the subject matter expert, as a, as a seasoned professional nanny um who just 
knows what has worked and what, is, what hasn't. And so tone is everything. You can, you can ruin an interview in two set, an interview or a relationship in two seconds flat if the perception for the other party is that of um, entitlement or attitude or that you know better than the family. Right. right. So tone right. is everything. It is yeah. everything. We are there to help them not take over. Right. And, and, and Toy, I totally agree. So she just said that um, nannies find it difficult to ask for what they want. Mm -hmm. They do. That's why we're here talking today, because it is easy to advocate for our kids. It is easy to advocate for our loved ones. And it is incredibly difficult to ask for what we want. But the problem is when you don't ask for what you want and what you need is that we end up building resentment towards the family. We give away yes. our power. And then we get mad when the situation doesn't turn out the way that we want it to, um, but we've never asked for what we want. And families aren't mind readers. You know, they have no idea what we want unless we ask for it. So, mm -hmm. um, but tone is huge because I feel like there's two camps in the nanny world right now. I think there's a, a generation of nannies that think that, you know, they just, this is what I want. I'm not willing to compromise. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the nannies that are terrified to ask for what they want because they don't want to ruin anything or they don't, they, you know, it's not about them. And I feel like finding the happy place is also finding the middle, the yes. middle ground. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, 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 we have a lot on this end and we have a lot on that end and we have yeah. very little right here in the yeah. middle. Yeah. I used to be to on, <laughs> Yes. I I used to I I used to be such a people pleaser and yeah. I felt like sometimes they would just my kindness was taken advantage of and it was yeah. like if I do something once it's like well why didn't you put this in why do you do this why do you do that I'm like wait a minute in my head I'm like that's not in my job description I did that to help you I did that because I knew it was going to make your day run smoother this is not mm -hmm. an everyday thing. Um, mm -hmm. This is not a, because it would take me, take me away from the kids to do this all of the time. I just had a few mm -hmm. minutes, so I did it. And I knew that it mm -hmm. would help. So mm -hmm. it's just, uh, it's, it's frustrating. And when yeah. you get frustrated like that, every day it becomes a little bit more, it's like that one little like a drop of water and it keeps eroding and eroding and eroding. And over time you have a big deep hole in that rock and mm -hmm. you don't know how that water got in that, in that rock, but you just, it's like, okay, you know what? They are making me mad. I am not staying here. I am not doing this. And you become resent and you don't like going to work and you resent yeah. going and to it's work. All about, it's all about giving away your power. You know, yes. because he, so for example, right, when you have, you're taking care of one baby and I, and I do want to get back to talking about industry standards because I think you guys are all making a good point. Yes. I was thinking, I'm um, watching that. Yeah. <laughs> so we do that. Um, but when you are starting a nanny position and you have mm -hmm. one baby who's five hours a day, it's easy to hop in and help out wherever the family needs help because there's a ton of downtime. Right. Right. But then as that baby becomes a toddler and that toddler now has a sibling, that workload just quadrupled just in caring for the kid. Right. right. And so then expectations aren't reset. And to that, I say, anytime there's a transition in work, it's time to sit down and have a meeting with the family about the changes that are happening and to set the new expectations. Right. And that is sometimes the families just need to know what your day looks like. I mean, listen, Angela, the tr here's the truth. The truth is I was a phenomenal nanny. I, my goal was to let that mom come home and just spend time with her kids and not have to worry about anything else. As yes. a mom, my house daily looks like it's been ransacked by drug lords. And that is the truth. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> to do You are so odd. <laughs> Oh my gosh, to do everything is impossible, right? And so, right. so for me, if I had a nanny, 
I'm telling you, my dishes wouldn't be done when she came here in the morning because I am barely alive. Let's be honest. So for mm -hmm. me, I would have a conversation that, hey, I don't expect you to do my dishes or just know this is me as a person. My kids are my priority. My house is going to be a mess in the morning. This, this is what I expect, A, B, C, and D, right? And so right. if you're not willing to talk about the challenge, then it's never going to get resolved. And so I, so I was true. this way too. I was a people pleaser to the max. At least I was until I started the agency world. And then that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> um, but I realized in doing that, that I would give away my power. Like I'm letting my, my employer determine whether or not I'm happy or frustrated. Because I guarantee you that you, do, you clean up after the party that first time. And she just thinks she's totally not doing that. She doesn't think that that's a one time. Yes. She now thinks that like party, party cleanup is totally cool with you. Right. So yeah. unless there's a way hey, I am happy to help this time, let's chat before you have the next party to see how we can kind of collaborate on the cleanup. Right. I mean, there's right. so many ways you can kind of do it where you, I mean, as a nanny, right? We wear lots of hats, right? We are kid wrangler. We are house manager extraordinaire. We are, we are, we are therapist. We are parent coach. We are cheerleader. We are all of these different things. And we also have to be self advocate mm -hmm. and ask for what we need. It's huge. And this um, seems I to be on the bottom of our list. It always is. I know. I know. So that's how we get out of the comfort zone, right? Yes. And I do want yes. to do what's about industry standards because yes. I too think that would be great. The only issue, you guys, is that every single family is so different, right? And so, yes, there should be a group of standards. And more than that, your agency should be, at, should be educating their clients on what it means to be a good employer and educating them on what it mean, what what nanny expectations are, right? That is, and what it means to be a good employer. Because at the end of the day, that's how they're going to keep their nanny. And so, you know, yes, having standards is important. And most good agencies know what those standards are. The problem is, is that once the agency and the families have, or once the agent, once the families and the nannies have matched. The agencies are out of it, and it becomes the responsibility of the nanny to identify a problem, to ask questions, to advocate for herself, and to plan. And part of that is the nanny should be asking her agency, hey, I'm having these challenges. How do I fix them? Or, you know, leaning on her village, too. But so right. industry standards are, of course, every agency should be doing that. Um, but also your agency and your family aren't going to dictate your happiness, right? You're going to have to take ownership in a relationship. And that is, I mean, like, can I get an amen that seriously, the, the way that a nanny and family relationship works best is when it's a partnership, period. Yes. Amen, amen, and amen. And Let's pass. Right? Yes. Let's pass yeah, the offering it, plate. It <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> So, yes. And so, and because that's true, by very definition, it means that you have to advocate for yourself and ask for what you want. And advocating yes. for yourself doesn't mean being a jerk. It means being a professional. Say that again. <laughs> advocating and for yourself doesn't mean being a jerk. It means being a professional. Yes. Yeah. And there's a difference between being um, a professional nanny and just a, okay, well, she's just a nanny. I'm not just a I nanny. I'm not phrase. just a nanny. And, yeah, and no. I hate it when people say, well, oh, you're just a nanny. And um, my husband one day, <laughs> I don't know where we were, and he said, um, yeah, my wife uh, takes care of children. Oh, she babysits. He said, no, she is a professional career nanny. And, he, yeah. and the, man, <laughs> the man looked at him like, what's that? <laughs> and I was, I'm sitting over here just observing, trying to stay quiet and just to see what 
what's gonna come out of his mouth next because you never know my husband he said yes as he yeah. said she has studied she goes to conferences she takes professional training she does i mean he just ticked off a list he said so she could probably come over here and get your your child quiet quicker than you can <laughs> i was like why did he say that so what? he looks at me like come get him <laughs> and i'm looking like him like what <laughs> So mm -hmm. I go over there and I talk to the child and I start making funny noises and the child starts laughing instead of crying. And, and he just looks at me. He said, I guess she is a professional. I'm like, well, duh. <laughs> and guess what he just did for you. He advocated for you. Yes. Right. Yes. He changed her mind. And when you advocate for yourself, you change not only your mind, but the mind of others. Yes. Right. Like, yeah. And, and by the way, my husband would do the same. <laughs> like, Good. I'm glad mine is not the only one. <laughs> not, not the only. Yeah, okay, okay, because yeah. because sometimes uh, I know when my husband is very protective, mm -hmm. and um, when people say something that's kind of like offensive to him, he just goes down that road. I'm like, ah. Uh. Sometimes yeah. it's not about me. It's it's about something. And I know he's going to go down there. I was like, you should have just be quiet. You should have just left it alone. And now you're going to get it all. But yeah, it, it takes it, it takes a, a partnership. Just like a marriage, you meld in a marriage. And you, sometimes you don't get along, but you talk about it. And you get back on the right page. That's the same relationship you need to have with your families. It really and is. I don't know about anybody else. But my the family I have now, the mom and I, we talk to each other every morning. And uh, even if she's not there when I get there, she will send me a text message and let me know this is what the baby did last night. This is what's going on with the boys. And, uh, you know, and the calendar, uh, you know, it's the meal planning is on the, on the iPad and let me know all the details of the day. And if I have any questions to send her a message. Mm -hmm. So it, it's important that you communicate. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, because that's how you present yourself is also what comes back to you. If you present yourself as a doormat, I'm sorry, people are going to treat you like a doormat. If you present yourself as not advocating for yourself, people are going to assume that they need to take that role for you, right? And so really, this is about, it's, it's really about taking your power back and asking for, for what you want. I mean, we, I, my, my favorite family of all times, I, I still talk to her, I still see, see my kiddos, like, she, I would work for a single mom with twins, and every single day, at the end of my day, she said, how was your day? Right. And that I got still because for me, that's my love language, right? Like yes. that connection, like it wasn't just about the kid, like my well-being directly affected her kids. Our partnership defect basically affected everything about our relationship. Yes. So it was a relationship and what relationships can't be one sided and be healthy. Right. No, it, they can't. Yeah takes two people it takes it takes more than one um let's see now the point that you made about kenny rogers uh -huh. about no one to hold him no one to fold him no one to walk away and no one to run yeah. <laughs> there are several jobs that that you just mm -hmm. there's an intuition Mm -hmm. And if you listen to it, mm -hmm. a sense of discernment, call it a sixth sense or whatever you want to say, call it, listen to it. Listen to that inner voice. Uh -huh. And if it says, run, Boris, run, then take off running. <laughs> yep, put your feet on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so true. There's a couple of things about that. Like I, I did work for an, an A-list celebrity and I learned that experience changed my life because it, it really cemented in me um, a sentiment that has never left me and is true into my life to stay. And that is no amount of money makes a painful job worth it. That's and true. I live by that. 
I live by that. Yes, money's important. And, and for, by all means, earn what you can, but it cannot be the, the leading factor in figuring out when um, a job is right for you or not. It really, you have to, it, it, you have to meet all of the components. And the funny thing is like, of all the nanny jobs that I interviewed with, most of the time, and I would say 99% of the jobs that I interviewed for, I knew within the first five minutes if that was going to be a job or a fit for me, right? It's, it's a gut thing. It is an intuition thing. And every time I have not listened to that, I have paid the price. <laughs> it, is so, it is so true. Because even that job that I took, I made incredible money. Um, but I... I talked myself into the job versus knowing it was right for me and I paid the price. So um, yeah, the intuition piece is, that's almost the most important piece. And I love every time I hear that song, um, I, I think of that. Like you have to know when to play, you have to know when to say, nope, this isn't right for me. You need to know when to say yes and you need to know when to escape the building as fast as you can. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Every time I'm okay. I was trying to read what uh Sherry said. Uh yeah. every time I'm interviewing for a job, I say I'm interviewing the families just like they're interviewing me. Now I have one more question for you. And it was a tip that, that somebody gave me. Mm -hmm. Um have you ever interviewed or talked to the past nanny? Always. Oh, no. Okay. Always. So one of the reasons why I ended up entering into the recruiting world in the first place is because the, the agency who placed me, um, it was the first agency that I worked with that I felt like was trying to match make for me. And that changed my world because every agency that I had worked with to that point, I felt like it was just about the family. I would say, I want this, this, and this. They send me on an interview where it didn't match. And yes, I ended up finding families through them, but I never felt fully supported um, in this position. And so when I came on board, it became incredibly important to me um, to advocate or to advocate for my nannies. And so one of the things that I would do when I would meet with a nanny is that I would ask what, what it is that she's looking for. Um, and, Oh my gosh, Angela, I just forgot your question. <laughs> See, mom brain. Mom brain. I came back from the conference. I'm pretty sure I slept for like eight hours. I'm there. And like now there's holes and sunshine. What was your question? <laughs> I was asking, have you ever interviewed the nanny, the past nanny? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, yes. So one thing I learned, so when I came on board and worked for the agency, it was really important for me to know that if we were going to set this family up for success, I needed to know the intimate details of this job. Because it's just like when you go on a first date with someone, you're going to get the representative that tells you everything's glowing and, you know, easy and great and happy. Mm -hmm. and all of, you meet someone for the first time, they're putting on their, their rosy show for you. Yeah. Right? The rosy yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. When, um, you know, most of the time we were working with the nannies that were leaving that family. And if we weren't, I always asked to call them. Um, and I always called them if I knew them. And anytime one of our positions ended, I would always call the nanny before I called the family um, to see if they needed a new nanny or if we would work together. And I would tell the nanny, and I to this day tell the nanny, everything that you and I talk about is confidential. Because here's the thing, you're going to get families that have a pretty painful job, right? Like mm -hmm. they, whatever reason, they work from home, they've got a, you know, cranky grandma to a short term, the out, whatever makes it challenging, um, you know, is something that needs to be addressed. But I always like to hear from the nanny, what was your best day? What was your worst day? And I let them know it's completely confidential. Even if there is a big issue, it just means that I as the agency are going to make sure that I ask my questions. And my follow-up questions so that I can then prepare the nanny that comes in there next for success. And most of the time, she's not even going to get through the door because I'm going to talk to her about whatever. She's not going to the interview. I think that's an incredibly important um, recruiting technique. Um, and not only that, that's how you build your reputation as an agency. 
Okay. That's how you build your agency is based on the reputation that you have among your nanny community is just as important as your reputation among your families. Okay. Um, when I took my job at On Call Nanny, one of the things that I said is that I wanted the ability to say no to any single family that I didn't want to work with. That was a non-negotiable for me because if I don't yes. feel like I sell your job, I, I won't be, neither one of us will be successful. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I also understand that there's three sides to every story. There's the family story, there's the nanny story, and then usually the, the actual facts are somewhere in the middle, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when I'm coming off and had a horrible experience, I'm going to help coach her on what not to look for in the next job to encourage her to take some time to find her calm before she starts interviewing again. So all of that frustration is not landing on this new family, right? Okay. Um, and help her find that dream job, even if it's not with my agency. So yeah, it's important to talk to the name. You can't just get the family's perspective on any, on everything, right? right. <laughs> it's never going to go well. Okay. Yeah. So when I asked you that question, I was talking about personally before you became the agency owner. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I mean, before you started working with the agency. I wish I could tell you, Angela, that I was that cool. I really didn't even think that that would be something um, that would be important. You know, so much of everything that I'm sharing with you today is um, on lessons learned over the course of the year. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> encourage nannies to reach out to previous empl employees with the caveat that sometimes it's just not a match and that doesn't mean it won't be a match for you, okay? So I think it's good to talk to the nanny, but especially if the nanny's had a bad experience or even if they've had a good experience. Um, and I'll give you an example of that. So I had a nanny, placed her with the family. She was uh, started when the, the baby was newborn Ended up leaving at three and a half. It was her favorite family. She had an incredible bond with the, with the child, with the family. I shared all of that information with the next nanny came in. That little boy was so angry that his nanny left that he put that nanny through the paces. So her experience was way different than the previous nannies leaving. So I do think it's important. Just be careful. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I had the experience of talking with several previous nannies mm -hmm. and some of the things that they said were accurate. Uh -huh. And I think it's all about their perspective and where they're coming from. Because when you are a seasoned nanny and it, we almost have to be chameleons sometimes to yeah. meld with the families. We know what we want and we know what we don't want and everything is not going to match. Not, right. you know, 100%. But not if you can get that 80-20 rule, mm -hmm. you're doing good. Yeah. So the problems that she had, and I, I was like, wow, this family's going to be this way, this family's going to be that way. And when I went to talk to them in person, I was like, I thought she said, I thought she said, I thought she said, and this was all going on in my mind about I thought she said, and it kind of clouded my judgment on this sure. family, right? Because I hadn't talked to them yet, and right. I hadn't and heard their perspective. Like you said, there's there's always three sides to a story, yeah. And, and, sure. and sure. once I started asking questions, and they were talking to me and telling me all these things. It became a totally different story. And I'm like, oh, okay. So this is what happened. And I remember what she told me. I heard what the family said. And I kind of put together the pieces. And right. it was all a personality clash. Right. It's a lot. Most nanny family relationships dissolve because of because it's just not a good fit and here's the other thing i'll say about that you also has to have to ask follow-up questions to the nanny right and one of my favorite follow-up questions when i'm talking to a nanny even to this day is how did you try to resolve that right so if she's telling me they're always late i always have to ask for my paycheck they promised me x y and z and they mm -hmm. never promised. my next question is how did you try to resolve that? Right. 
And that will tell you a lot. That will tell you if she's the caregiver that needed to come to my class, right? Because she needs to ask the hard questions. Um, or if that's really something that you need to pay, pay attention to. Because if she said, I asked them on multiple occasions, if I could set up, a, I set up a calendar reminder for payday. I, um, you know, I left a note the day before. If she came up with all of these solutions, and they never respected that, that's going to tell you a whole lot more before you go into that interview than what the problem was in the first place. Right. 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 So, I mean, that tells me everything. Well, at least it, it laser focuses my question. Right. Right. So knowing what you want. So mm -hmm. lastly, okay. what is your best advice for us as far as getting to our happy place? coming out of the comfort zone and getting to our happy place. Because I know a lot of nannies are afraid to ask for what they want because other nannies will just accept whatever it is. And we'll feel like, man, I could have had that job. They just went in and undercut me and undersold me and under, you know, just uh, what is the best advice as a agency owner as a nanny as a mom as a just knowing the industry to know the way that you do what is your best advice for us my best my best advice can be said in two words and that is be brave um i truly believe that you cannot change your circumstances if you are not willing to be brave you know you have to be willing to push back what hasn't worked and to, to make the attempt to change into something better. You know, I, I say this to my daughter all the time. My daughter has anxiety issues, pretty serious anxiety issues. And I tell her all the time, you're never going to know what awaits you if you don't try. You have to be brave. If you don't like it, we can walk away. We don't have to do that again. You have to be brave. Okay. So, um, and then this, to the second part of that is to really lean on the professional who you respect. I love these nanny groups that they're available, but sometimes the advice is not good. I would really, if you need advice on how to approach an issue or a challenge, that you lean on the people that you admire, respect, and do things the way that you want to do them and lean to them and ask. I, for real, you can call me anytime. To anybody out there, if you have an issue in this industry that you don't know how please come to me. I've been doing this a long time. I am happy to share and just strategically plan. Um, but most of us just need our village. So be brave. Be brave. Okay, um, I'm going to make that a hashtag. Be brave. <laughs> I'm serious. I am going to make that a hashtag. Be brave. Yes. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> nannies, be brave. The only way you're going to get to that happy place is to be brave, come out of your comfort zone, and to respectfully and professionally ask for what you want. And don't be afraid of the rejection because it's a 50-50 chance. But right. if you never ask, you never know. Right. And you can't, thank you, Rivi. be brave. <laughs> she got the hashtag right. There you go, be brave. <laughs> <laughs> but mm -hmm. you have to be willing to take the the no with the yes and then there may be if they know this is important to you you may not be able to go to all the things that you want to go to but they may be able to compromise and say okay mm -hmm. two of the five things that you can go want to go to we can you know let's work let's start there yeah. And then when you come back from these conferences, mm -hmm. show oh, what you learn. Yeah. Show right. what you learn. Let them know. Okay, so I learned about um, the gut health mm -hmm. uh, of babies. Mm -hmm. And I have a baby who's allergic to milk, the milk mm -hmm. proteins. And I learned mm -hmm. about the goat's milk and the difference between the goat's milk and the cow's milk and the gut mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. And I was talking to the mom, we were talking to the dad today, and he was like, that's interesting. I'm going to research that. I'm going to find out. Yeah. You know, these allergists, they don't want to, they don't want to tell you to, you know, experiment with your child because they don't want to be wrong and hell liable. But yeah, 
we're mm-hmm. going to do that. We're going to research that. We're gonna, and I was like, yes! So, yeah. <laughs> you Can got we it. You, carols? You got it. Uh, yes. Okay. So she says it's hard to be brave when you're single and the only person bringing in the money. So I, what I will say is that having a hard conversation or asking for what you need doesn't mean that you're offering an ultimatum. You're not saying, I need this or else, right? It just gives mm-hmm. you information to make that decision as to whether or not you need to look somewhere else, right? I never advocate leaving a position like immediately before you have something else lined up unless it's an abusive or or dangerous situation. Um, But, you know, asking these questions and being brave just gives you information to decide if it's time to look for something new. So fear is a killer. Fear is a killer, Carol. Um, So I, I just, and if you need to talk to me, you should reach out. We can chat. Yeah. Yes. Well... If you all have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we will have Miss Tiffany to answer them because when I tell you the presentation, she couldn't give the whole presentation, but I think she gave very important tips and points from the presentation. And this is just one thing that we learned at the conferences this past weekend. It there were some amazing people there. And I, I went into half of one and then I went into the other half of another one. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got notes from this one. Okay, let me go right to the next one that I wanted to go to. So I got notes from every, you know, the ones that I wanted to go to. I just, I was just hopping in and out of, of, of workshops because all of them were so good that I went to. And all of them were so valid and important to me. And I went to the ones that were important to, to what my situation was. Mm-hmm. But it was so good. If you have questions, and Ms. Tiffany, can you please put your information in the yeah. comments uh, yeah. so that we we'll know uh, how to reach your agency? Do you place people outside of your area? We have offices in Seattle and in the Bay Area. Okay, so yeah. Seattle so, and Bay yeah. Area. I know yeah. there's there's some people on here watching that are that are uh, <laughs> that are in that area. If you're yeah. in that area, and even if you just have questions about coming out of your comfort zone, how to act respectfully, how to uh, communicate effectively with with your uh, families, and you know when to run. <laughs> yeah. 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 When to run. Uh, yeah. Please leave your questions and uh, Tiffany will uh, answer them for you. Uh, And she's going to leave her information. So if you need to call and have a personal chat with her or email her, then she's going to, she has graciously volunteered her time to get us to our happy place. Because right now I'm happy, 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 joy, joy, joy. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for coming on and for sharing your knowledge in, and in, in basically the highlights of your workshop yeah. <laughs> with us. I, I really, really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll get to talk to you again soon. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All have right. We'll talk. Have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, ladies gentlemen thank you so much for joining us tonight thank you for uh, listening and if you have any questions if there, you have questions that weren't answered or questions that were kind of touched on that were not clearly answered please leave your comments also if you like what we're doing here go to ask the nanny page it's it's facebook.com forward slash ask the nanny leave your comments leave us a review as to what we're doing, go to on call, on call nanny, and leave. If you like what you heard Tiffany say, go to on call nanny. It's it's facebook.com. I'm sure she's gonna leave all that on on the page, or I will put it on there so you all can go make a comment and recommend her, make some recommendations on her page, because the information that she just gave us is invaluable.
it's priceless so next week we're going to have a wrap up of the INA conference it's a holiday weekend I know so we're gonna have you know some ladies and gentlemen that were from the INA conference to stop by and just give us a shout out and give us a you know just a short blurb of what they learned at the conference and if you were there come on by stop by give us your comments if you weren't there come on by find out what happened so you can be in New Orleans with us next year and by the way it's in March just in case those of you who don't know and haven't heard it's in March the 28th through the 31st so I will see you all next week have a great week and we'll see you here next same time same place next week